This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Prime. Hello and welcome to this special episode of Heads Up. We're coming to you from the venue of the 14th HCL International Bridge Championship. One of its kind unique event which sees the participation of the game enthusiasts from not just across the country but across the world. And also has some of the world's top ranking bridge players compete for the coveted trophies. Established in 2003, the 14th edition of the HCL Bridge Championship saw the participation of 120 teams. Some of them led by world's top ranking bridge players, including world number 4, Giorgio Dubion, world number 7, Zia Mahmood, among others. Held between 19th and 23rd October in Delhi, it is one of the largest congregation of bridge players in the world, where bridge enthusiasts and professionals compete for a prize purse of Rs 1.2 crores. To find out about the evolution of the championship, we spoke with Mrs. Kiran Nadar, trustee Shiv Nadar Foundation and an accomplished bridge player. Thanks for taking out the time, ma'am, for uh, talking to us. Uh, you're, of course, uh, you know, participating in the HCL 14th International Bridge Championship and we're talking to you on the sidelines. Uh, ma'am, you've been involved in promoting the game of bridge for a long time now. HCL has been organizing the championship since 2003, which was when it was established by you. How has the journey been uh, from 2003 to now? It's been a great journey. And uh, this has become the foremost Indian championship right. in the country. And it's today probably one of the best in the world. Uh, in terms of prize money, we've been rated it as the number two prize money tournament in the whole world, which right. is a great thing. We hope to become the number one, not just in prize money, but in, in the whole scale of the operation. I want to read something which you wrote last year in one of your blogs. It is, and I quote, it is unlikely that many of us are aware that India will be host to the 42nd World Bridge Championship. We're talking about 2015, last year when India was, I mean, of course, the result the of host. bridge worldwide. It's a fairly popular game. You have 60 million you know, people playing bridge. Uh, so how are we doing compared to the rest of the world? Our numbers are small and they're shrinking. Unfortunately, not too many youngsters are coming into the game. Right. And we need to do something to change that. The association should take a more active role in promoting bridge at the junior level, right. at school level. Right. You know, China has tournaments at the school level. Right. And they have school kids playing their national tournaments. So. Uh, it comes in at, at a very young age. Next year, we plan to have a bronze addition to this tournament, um, getting the uninitiated who want to learn and who want to come in, who haven't any exposure, to come in. Right. And we think that will be a, a good start to get uh, the youngsters into the game. You've been playing bridge for, you know, for decades now and it's still something which is not as widely known as perhaps it should have been. You are a bridge player of, I mean, international bridge player. You've represented India uh, and one of the very few women to do so. So when and where and how for you, you know, your love, your passion for bridge sort of, you know, started? Uh, I played my first international tournament in 87. Right. Uh, I played in the ladies circuit at that time. Right. And that's where it started. You've played with, uh, you know, a lot of big names, I mean, you know, and uh, a lot of corporate, you know, uh, you know, big wigs like Mr. Bill Gates and so many others, in fact. Uh, I mean, how did that happen? We were playing a pairs tournament. Right. Mixed okay. pairs, actually. Right. So he was playing with an American partner and I was playing with my Indian partner. And it was just the movement. Right. So we landed up on the same table and we played two, two boards against each other. That was it. How was it? It was okay. 
right, or Mr. Warren Buffett, uh, who said that you know you give me three more inter uh, three more uh, bridge players and I'll be happy to go to jail. I mean that's not the exact quote, of course. I'm paraphrasing, uh, but that's the kind of popularity that the game has, you know, uh, amongst corporate. Well, both Warren Buffett and Bill Gates are both their biggest bond together is bridge. Right. So that's something for our viewers. Yeah. Right. Uh, moving on, ma'am. Uh, but two more days to go. I mean, uh, Sunday is when the event concludes and the winners will be announced, winners will emerge. So what are the, some of the changes which you've noticed, I mean, both in terms of, you know, the reach of the game, whether it is increased or not, also in terms of the, sca uh, the scope of the tournament itself, the HCL uh, International Bridge Championship, uh, what has it been since 2003? Well, it, it started on a much smaller note right. uh, in number of, but even then, it was large by Indian standards. Right. This time, because we've gone international and we popularized it with foreign players, the participation has been quite amazing. We've got a, over 120 teams participating in both gold and silver, 80 teams in silver and 40 odd in gold. Right. So that's a huge participation. Absolutely. And um, I think people are quite taken up with the event and next year inshallah we'll have 150 teams inshallah thanks for talking to us ma'am thank you so thank much for you. your time thank, thank you. you very much my next guest is one of the world's finest bridge players someone who's widely known in the world bridge circle and has a unique playing history he played for pakistan in 1981 and was responsible for taking the team to the final of the bermuda bowl and uh, for the last two decades, he's been playing for the U.S. and was a member of the World Championship winning team in 2009. None other than Mr. Zia Mahmood. Thanks for taking out the time and talking to us, sir. Thank you very much. I, I, I do object to his calling me one of the best players. I hope I am the best player. Oh, uh, well, absolutely. Yeah, undisputably, I hope. No. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and also, it wasn't me who took the team. The team took itself. It's impossible for one person to carry a team. Right. So it's a team game. Yeah. Right. Uh, so... Uh, your team is, uh, you know, almost all set to sort of, you know, win the trophy here at the 14th HCL uh, Bridge Championship. Yeah. Uh, how has, uh, you know, these uh, last few games have been? The whole tournament has been great fun. I mean, the only objection I have is we play so much bridge. We right. don't really have time to wander around Delhi or see, you know, sort of the sites or shop. But I guess the schedule is such as that. But um, right. apart from that, it's been a lovely tournament, well organized. Right. And we're really happy that... The HCL are sponsoring this tournament because very few corporations sponsor to the extent that these guys are doing this. So it's very nice for us. Right. We'll talk about that. I mean, this yeah. is not your first trip to India, although this no, is the I've first No, I've been time. many times to India. I, Calcutta, Delhi, all over the place. And you played bridge as well. I played lots of bridge here. Right. And I see done pretty well here. I think partly because I think when the Pakistani comes to India, they treat you like it's your home turf, you know. Right. The Indians are very hospitable, especially to Pakistanis. Right. And I feel very comfortable here. Great to hear that, sir. Has it been a cakewalk, considering you are undisputably the world's best player? No, it's not a cakewalk, because there's so many good teams. We're playing the Russians in the final. Right. But we have come with a, like, missile-bearing team. We've got three other players in the team who are all world champions. Right. Well, one is actually not a world champion. He's probably the most talented of us. He's a young guy who right. is a Danish guy. Okay. And he's super talent. He hasn't won any world championships, but he's as good as any world champion. So our team is very top heavy and we should, you know, perform well. You've been playing bridge for four decades now, a little over four decades actually. Well, thanks for reminding me. <laughs> I remember, you know, while reading uh, somewhere that you did say that, you know, there are not a lot of games which you can still be playing. Yeah. You know, this so, uh, I mean, you know, how has this journey been as a bridge player? You know, it, it, each person has a different affinity to their own passions. For me, bridge happened to be something that I got addicted to quite young, like about 24, 25, older than most bridge players. Right. I, had, you know, I was in the world of business. I was an accountant. My family owned newspapers in Pakistan. I was involved in those. And then I got bitten by the bridge bug, and I changed my life and became a bridge player. And my family all turned around to me and said, you're crazy to become a bridge player. Right. But if you're going to be a bridge player, at least try and be the best that there is. So hopefully I didn't let them down too badly. And now they all, of course, boast and say, oh, my guy is, you know, the best bridge player in the world. Before they used to say I was an Ullu, you know. Right. This is, this is something which I guess, you know, is unique to India and Pakistan, you know. 
families, how they sort of, you know. Yeah, they, sort of, they want to be protected and looking after the kind of security of one's life. And I mean, you're not, you're not just someone who's just been playing bridge. You've been uh, sort of, you know, promoting the game as well. In fact, I mean, you know, uh, when Mr. Parvez Musharraf was the president, he invited you to Pakistan to sort of, you know, honor you with a special medal. That was a funny story because I was sitting, I think, in New York. I used to live in those days. And I got a phone call from someone who said, we're President Musharraf's I know, minister or right. aide or something. And he wants to give you a medal. Can you come to Pakistan to collect it? So, I mean, I was very you know, nice of him, and we fixed up a date. And I went there, and on the way, I said, you know, when we got to Pakistan, right. we told them, shall we drive in our car and see you there? They said, no, no, you have to come in our car because it's bulletproof. You never know. Right. So that was a little bit of a nervous moment. Right. And then after he gave me the medal, he said, the only condition I give you the medal is that you play bridge with me. <laughs> okay. So I said, okay, it's a great honor. Let's play bridge. So that evening, we played bridge, him and I and a couple of generals. Right. Kind of top generals in the government, and they were about three or four people allowed to watch us. So we're playing and we're not doing well. And I said, this is embarrassing. You and him. Me and him were fixed partners right. against the two generals. And they were beating us. Which was, I said, look, he's called me, given me a medal. And if I lose, this is going to be really look bad on my resume. Right. You know? <laughs> so uh, near the end, suddenly we were playing a very funny system, which they, the army people play. Okay. And I thought if I bid normally, we're going to be in trouble because the general is a very dashing guy right. and a dashing bridge player. So he likes to overbid and redouble and stuff. So anyway, he opened... Fairly aggressive. Uh, very aggressive, but very charming. Right. So he opened a club which showed a huge amount of points for them, or 18 points, but I had zero points. Right. So the, it went past, and I, instead of showing my zero points in the methods that they have, made a psychic bid. You were bluffing them. I was bluffing, and I passed. And he said, what? And as he said, what? All the policemen pulled up their gun. I thought they were going to shoot <laughs> me. So I said, no, wait a moment. Wait till the end of the hand. So the, at the end of the hand, he discovered I'd bluffed them. And he said, you see, this is why my generals are so stupid. Anybody can bluff them. Yeah? <laughs> British players can bluff our generals every day. And the, he was so happy, and they were happy. So the, the, we ended up winning, and I think I got my medal with just reserve. Uh, that one day when you were sort of you know, glad that you had the president on your side. <laughs> <of> your <team. laughs> Quickly, you know, the last thing which I want to talk to you about is uh, what could be done, you know, uh, this championship is, of course, will do its bit to sort of, you know, popularize <coughs> the game in the country. But what else could be done to promote, you know, the game of okay. bridge? Okay, if you announce in the kind of public forums, either through TV or through newspapers, the standard of the tournament and the levels and the Indian guys who do well, right. that helps to promote it. Yeah. I mean, it's very rare you get a company like HCL putting so much money in. True. And I think, you know, if it's promoted pros pros probably by all the various media outlets, it has a chance of getting, you know, taking off. Right. But it's not easy in our countries because people say, what is bridge? You know? Another uh, problem, you know, unique to the subcontinent where, you know, any other game apart from cricket, you know, uh, is, you know, uh, pushed back, yeah. right? But um, things are changing, of course. We have a lot more games sort of, you know, coming up. A lot more uh, games are becoming popular. So on that note, thanks for talking to us. Thank sir. you Thank you so much. much. As pointed out by Mr. Zia Mahmood, perhaps corporate sponsoring such niche events like Bridge is the way forward to promote the game further. On that note, we would like to slip into a quick break, but you don't go anywhere as there's a lot more action coming up on the other side.